I wish to acknowledge that we are blessed to live, learn, and create on Treaty 4 territory, traditional lands of the Nehewak, Nakoi, Nakoda, and homeland of the Métis, Lakota, and Dakota peoples. Please join me with the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for the years of learning and growth we have had the opportunity to experience during our time in elementary school. Today, we thank you for this time to listen and learn about a new beginning. Please open our ears and our hearts to the messages being shared so that we may learn a little bit more about the people, the academics, the culture, the new opportunities, and the faith that will surround us when we enter Ripple as royals next year. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the way that my people were given. At Ripple here, we've started a relationship with Indigenous knowledge. And it's one of the reasons that I was brought here as a knowledge keeper, uh, to help talk about how Indigenous people honor Creator and all of creation. And what I'd like to tell you and what I'd like to share with you today is kind of a prayer, but not really. It's an affirmation. We have a relationship with our Creator. And in that relationship, we talk about the four directions coming together and the four colors of that wheel that some will, of you probably know as a medicine wheel. In my language, we call it Pamatsuin, the sacred hoop, the sacred way of being. And I want you to know that you're included in those prayers. Every morning I smudge and I pray at home. And I pray for all of the students that I work with. And so I want you to know that we have prayed for you and we will continue to pray for you. And that's part of our relationship, to look after each other and to take care of us in a spiritual fashion as well. So please know that we've kept you in our prayers. And thank you for being with us. We're looking forward to having you here. Ms. Fry, Mrs. Eckert, Ms. Bruce, and Ms. Bruce, and Ms. Patnode. Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Troy, I'm the Acting Vice Principal of Riffle High School. And I'm Mr. Hockle, the Principal of Riffle High School. We wanted to welcome you to the Virtual Royal for a Day. Thank you so much for joining us, we can't wait for you to take part in this wonderful day. It'll be a wonderful day of learning and experiencing what our school is all about. Even though we're separate, we're still together. Take care out there. My name is Mr. Uremko and I'm one of the Math 9 teachers here at Riffle High School. Uh, math is a very interesting subject, it's a fantastic subject area and I hope uh, uh, you enjoy it as well. Uh, math 9 is just a continuation of the grade 8 math that you're currently looking at now with just a few more things that we, of course we add to it. And for those of you who are really interested in studying mathematics at more of a, uh, a higher level, we do offer a pre-AP Math 9, which is a little bit more challenging than the regular Math 9, but it can definitely be very rewarding if you enjoy math. Uh, one of the areas of study in math that we really like to look at um, is an area called number theory. Uh, specifically, what number theory looks at is it looks at what's called prime numbers. Uh, some of you have been studying prime numbers, so when you look at the list of primes, You've got two, you've got three, you've got five, you have seven, 11, and then of course there's a whole bunch of primes. Uh, primes have always been of interest uh, to mathematicians, specifically the Greek mathematicians. Uh, they focused on an area uh, looking at how many prime numbers there were. Um, and it was proved 300 years before the birth of Christ that there's an infinite number of prime numbers, which at the time probably didn't seem that interesting. And probably to you right now as you're watching this, isn't interesting at all. But here's a fun fact about those infinitely many primes. A lot of you probably know somebody who's done some online shopping. And if you're doing online shopping, guess what you have to use? A credit card. Now, people will enter in their credit card online hoping to get whatever parcel they're purchasing, but they also want protection. 
Guess, the, guess what mathematics helps you protect that? Prime numbers. There is no way that anybody could have foreseen that that was going to be of usefulness 300 years before Jesus was born, or even 100 years ago, because we never had such a thing. But in modern day, it would be impossible to do online shopping without prime numbers. Okay, That's just a small portion of mathematics that is so useful in today's life. Now, there are some things in mathematics that aren't useful in today's life, and that's okay. We still enjoy studying it. We still enjoy learning it because it's interesting. It intrigues our mind. So I hope that when you come to Riffle, you enjoy mathematics as much as all of our students do. And I hope that your mathematical career in high school is a great one. Take care. grade eights and welcome to studio 103 otherwise known as the theater i'm miss kilkenny i teach drama and arts education here at the school and i'm so looking forward to meeting you next year here in the theater uh, i wanted to take the opportunity today to talk about some of the programming that we offer here in the theater in addition to drama and arts ed which you can take as curricular subjects we also have a pretty wide array of extracurricular opportunities for you to get involved in as well. So in the fall, we do a fall production every year, which involves actors, backstage people, lighting and sound crew, costume, uh, makeup, name it. You can be a part of the show if you'd like to be next year. Uh, we also typically do two improv teams that compete at the Canadian Improv Games Tournament, which takes place every year in February. The winner of that tournament travels to Ottawa to compete at a national level, which our school has done before, which is really exciting. We also take a show every year to One Act Festival, which happens in the spring. And we are unique in the fact that we are the only school that offers a program like That's Possible. That's Possible programs uh, runs for the entire year and it pairs students from our FIP, our special needs classroom, with students from our mainstream to bring a performance like a musical or a collective to the stage. So if you have questions about any of those things next year, my door is always open. Come and bug me and talk to me about any opportunities that you might think you, or that you think you might like to take in the theater next year. All right, in terms of a drama activity, Rufus, are you ready? Perfect, okay. What I'm gonna have you do, whether you're at home or you're sitting in your grade eight classroom with all of your classmates around, what I'd like you to do is stand up. Just stand up, that's all you need to do. Find yourself a nice wide base, and I want you to think for a moment about what it is, what tools we use when we're creating drama. Just muse on that for a minute. Okay, <laughs> you've probably come up with a lot of ideas. I'm gonna tell you my thoughts on that, and they are that you are creating drama with your body, you're creating drama with your voice, and most importantly, you're creating drama with your ideas and your thoughts about the world and about how we interact with it. That's the source that we use for all of our creative work in here. What I want you to do is take a deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. Now I can see it even though you're on the other side of the camera, this is probably what's happening in your classroom right now. You're checking right, you're checking left. Are people buying into what it is that you're doing? I'm gonna dare you right now to not compare. Dare to not compare. It doesn't matter what your neighbor is doing, this might look completely different for them. Take a deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. What we're going to do now, make sure you have a nice wide base so you don't fall over. Rufus, you're good. Drop your chin to your chest and you're just gonna let the weight of your head dangle your body all the way so that you're hanging loose like a goose over top of your toes. I'm gonna roll up, you stay down. Rufus is gonna stay down. No checking around the room like this. I just want you to hang upside down for a moment. In a year where it feels like the world has been flipped upside down at times, it is nice to join it and just flip upside down and let it go for a minute. Take a deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. As you're dangling there over top of your toes, whether you're at home or in your classroom, what I want you to do is be aware. Take a moment and find some gratitude for something within you that you are thankful for about yourself. Not about the world around you, about you. What gifts do you bring to the people that are fortunate enough to spend time with you? Your classmates, your family, the people that you interact with. What gifts do you bring to the world? 
and I want you to thank yourself for one of those gifts. As you're hanging out down there, what I'm going to ask you to do next is name one thing for yourself that you are going to stop doing in 2021. I want you to name for yourself one thing that you're going to start doing in 2021. And I want you to name something for yourself that you're going to keep doing in 2021. Because this is going to be the year that you transfer yourself from grade 8 to grade 9. It's a big year. You get a fresh start. And I want you to come into that with the best of intentions for yourself and for the people that are around you. Take one last deep breath in that dangling position, in through your nose, out through your mouth. And when you're ready, and only when you're ready to commit to that year of 2021, I want you to slowly roll up, head to come up at the top of your spine. And one last deep breath in and out. Thank you for having me in your classroom or in your home today. I hope very much to see you guys next year. Take care. Good morning, Rufus, and welcome to Catholic Studies. In this course, you're going to have a wonderful opportunity to explore your faith in a variety of ways. And today, we're going to do a little mini lesson about literalist versus contextual interpretation. So what you're going to see I have in front of me, Rufus, is a variety of books. I've got a smoothie Bible. I've got my cell phone, which will make sense in a second. I've got law. I've got some poetry. And I've got a narrative, a nonfiction book here. So what we're going to look at here is the opportunity to explore literature in a different way. So first things first, I'm gonna grab the smoothie bottle. I don't know about you, but I love smoothies in the morning. They start my day off great. I can put a bunch of healthy stuff in there, but let's just take a gander at this really quick. Just for kids over the rainbow smoothie, half a cup plus of club soda divided, colored sugar. Oh, I don't want this one. That seems silly to start my day with, doesn't it? Sunrise smoothie. That didn't seem very healthy for kids, did it, Rufus? We're starting with food coloring, come on. Eight ounces of unsweetened peach slicely partially thawed, eight ounces of vanilla yogurt, one cup of ice cubes, one can of pineapple juice, some lemon juice, and some almond extract. Well, that sounds delicious. Now, how I read this is I'm looking at directions, right? I see things step by step listed out, and then after I look at that, it tells me how to blend and put together. Understand? Next thing, I'm going to pull up with my cell phone, okay? I'm just going to read this list to you. Almonds. Apple cider vinegar, apples, baby laundry detergent, baby lotion, and broccoli. Now, Rufus, this is different than this, isn't it? This is how I make this. So this would be a grocery list, yeah? Now, if I asked you a question about the grocery list, I want you to give me a thumbs up if you think I have kids. Can you give me a thumbs up, Rufus? Now, we know that because we're making stories from the list. There was a couple clues in there baby laundry to look, uh, detergent, and baby lotion. So there's ways in which we create stories from limited information from that list. Let's take a look at this one. It's heavy, isn't it, Rufus? Could you lift it? Could you bicep press it? Yeah, you need to work on your biceps, buddy. <laughs> oh, there they are. Let's see here. Fraud. Section 380 of the criminal code, detail fraud. Fraud is when someone deceives another person on purpose for criminal gain. In order to prove fraud, it must be shown that the accused knew that his or her action could cause someone to lose other actions. Given the ever-changing complexity of our society, fraud can take many different forms. List, list, a little bit more to understand. We have to know the words, there's further explanations, there's definitions, it requires some backlogging, perhaps a teacher to unpack it with us, whereas the first two are fairly self-explanatory. Now I will say, if you're not a cook, this could be overwhelming. You could be like, I don't know how to start doing that but it's about following the steps. So we can see that they're getting sequentially just a little bit harder to understand. Let's look at this next one, a little thinner. You can bicep curl that one for sure. Get it, go Rufus, go. I thank you God for this most amazing day, for the leaping greenly spirits of trees and blue tree dream of sky, and for everything which is natural, which is infinite, which is yes. What we see there is an interpretation of prayer, an understanding of our faith. And the author, the way that they wrote it, talked about nature and sky and interconnectedness. So this would be a much deeper discussion about what you connected with, what it was representing, what you visually saw. So although it was short, it adds a lot of character and understanding because we have to unpack it, we have to discuss it. And how you interpret it would be different than another student or another person or a parent based on your experiences. 
So maybe you right there were picturing yourself in your summer holidays laying on the beach, looking at the infinite sky. Maybe someone else would be picturing the mountains. Maybe someone else would be picturing their trip to Hawaii back when we could travel. But there are ways in which we see that. So we visualize and we add a story to it. Last but not least, I have a wonderful story by Richard Wagamies called Keeper and Me. And it's a phenomenal story that it attempts to explain. And it's from a perspective that we can further understand. And that's what stories do. They tell us a little bit about another experience. And then we find ways to connect to it. So very briefly, Lonnie Flowers was a tall, rangy guy who hung out downtown shooting pool. I heard of him some of the other streeters, but until the night, never had anything to do with him. Hanging on the street, you hear a lot of names, mostly hang out with those you know, and circles can be pretty small. So this one is a story. We would read it front to back. This one we would read in snippets. This one we would read maybe something that pertains to us or pertains to a class that we're studying. This one we need when we need it. It's daily life. It's a list. And this one we go to when we're looking for something new or to be inspired cooking. The reason I bring this up is the Bible is actually a collection of books. It's not a single book that you read front to back. Rather, it is comprised of stories, narratives that tell us about people's experiences. It has poetry, like the Psalms, for example. Lots of law. If we look at the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, it tells us how to act, interact, how to create, and what the world looks like. And in Jewish culture, they very much follow that. It's called the Torah in Jewish culture. And that very much explains how to conduct. Then we have lists, very quick to the point. Do this, do this, do this, do this. Check. Sometimes this is a little bit easier than trying to interpret. And last but not least, we have things that we need to interact with. You have to literally get in the kitchen and start cooking. So when we look at all these, there's two things I want you to take away. Number one, we have to read it differently. The way I read a grocery list is different than I read poetry, which is different than I read law. Number two, we bring our experiences to it. And unless we know what we're reading and the original intention of it, sometimes we lose the magnitude of the message. So the Bible is a complex set of books that takes time to fully understand, that takes experience, that takes a conversation. And that's what Tax Studies will do. It'll look at these different texts and say, hey, it actually still very, very much applies to you. This ancient book of stories, of lists, of law, allows us to interact with our faith and invites us to dialogue. That's what the Bible would be. So that is a literalist versus contextualist. Literalist means word for word. I follow everything to the T. Contextualist means I look at the interpretation, the context, the story, the history, and the intention to fully understand the magnitude of the story. And Catholic studies will unpack those stories using those different lenses. Cool, Rufus? Cool. Hi folks, I have the pleasure of teaching Catholic studies here at Michael A. Ripple Catholic High School. My name is Ms. Murray. I'm also the lay chaplain here, which means that I get to interact with you and your faith in a variety of capacities. And what a privilege it is to walk that path with you. If there's one thing I want you to know for sure is that everybody's path is a little bit different. And the way that we act and interact with our faith is going to be very individual. But the point of this content and this curriculum that we cover is for you to further uncover what that means to you. Faith is a very important part of our life. It is foundational to who we are. It's the way we connect with ourselves, our God, and each other. And there's so many ways that we're going to do that as you explore your faith in your four classes of Catholic Studies 9, 10, 20, and 30. Each of the content allows you to further understand whether it's scripture, whether it's yourself, but all of it ultimately shows how interconnected it all is. In front of Rufus, we have a variety of books. One thing that we try to do here is we know that because everybody's path is so unique and different, we want to give you avenues to explore that faith. And I think literature is a wonderful way to do that. There will also be podcasts, there will be poetry, there's daily prayers, there's liturgies, there's retreats, there's gatherings. And each of them are an opportunity for you to understand what your faith means to you. You never know what's going to stick. So when you open your heart to the possibility of connecting deeper with your faith, suddenly the thing that clicks with you and makes sense is absolutely perfect. And it's an invitation directly for you. I look forward to meeting each and every one of you and exploring that faith journey as we go through the next four years together. Have a wonderful day.
Good morning, future royals. Here's Rufus. He's rolling into the Royal Refill. And this morning we're going to get a little intro to the nutrition program here at Riffle. Good morning, Mr. Spence. Good morning, how are you? Doing good. So, we are going to ask you a few questions All right. about the canteen. When can our future grade nines come and visit the canteen? Come at the first beginning of your lunchtime, whenever that may be. So right at the start of lunch, okay, rip down here, get in line for the yummy food. Goes quick. Goes quick. Okay, so be the first in line, future royals. What are some of the common or popular food items that you sell here? The uh, most common items are our hot meals that we sell. We do have other items that we do sell, like uh, the banana chocolate chip muffins that everybody always asks for. Yeah. Um, Rice Krispie cake, uh, hot dogs. Um, but mostly it's our, our hot meals that we sell. Like hot meals, perfect. And what would be, say, your most requested hot meal? The most requested hot meal is definitely protein and sausage. Uh, we also do butter chicken, spaghetti and meat sauce. There's always something different and it's usually different about three to four days a week. Awesome. And you make most of the stuff from scratch here? We do, yes. Awesome. So it's not only tasty, but nutritional. That's the plan. Perfect. Okay, thanks so much for the introduction. Rufus is hungry now. We'll probably right. have to go catch a snack. And we'll look forward to seeing you all in the fall and visiting our wonderful canteen all and right, Mr. Spence. You. Hello, my name is Miss Golden and I'm the choir director and music teacher here at Ripple. I teach arts at nine, music 10, 20, 30, choral, and vocal jazz. The Arts at Nine class takes place in the classroom back there and also in this space. And at some point during your first year, you'll all be here because all grade nines take Arts Ed. We do some intro music theory, we listen to a whole bunch of music, and at the very end, we spend some time playing guitar. Choir and vocal jazz are four credit classes that happen during the early bird period and at lunch. So if you love to sing and you're looking for some extra credit, this is the place. Riffle also has two extracurricular groups, one liturgy choir and one chamber choir. So there's a huge amount of places to get involved if you want to make some music. I'm so looking forward to meeting you all and making some music with you next year. What do you say, choir? Are we excited to meet these new royals? Yeah! Grade Hello, my name is Samantha Wilson. I am the Indigenous High School Advisor here at Ripple High School and welcome to our Wakotawin Baby Room. We are so looking forward to working with you in September and coming up and getting to know you. I get, I work with our students and I get to know the students and their families. I'm here to be one of the many supports you have and I'm here to do it through an Indigenous lens. Tansi. Hello, uh, my name's Preston Littletent. Uh, I want to talk to you about uh, drumming and singing here at the Riffle High School. It is a, a soothing way of life, you know. It, it's a, a, a good way to understand uh, and get connected with the uh, history and culture of your the backgrounds and also you know open to uh, uh, different religions and and, and, uh, and diff different people to partake partake in able to uh, sit around and uh, listen and and uh, to protocols about you know singing and drumming and why we we, we, we keep this uh, tradition going.
hanging out with Mr. Cabalus here, one of our grade nine teachers. Mr. Cabalus, can you tell me a little bit about what you teach here at Riffle? Hey everyone, uh, like Mrs. Hansen said, my name is Mr. Callis. Uh, I teach grade nines pre predominantly, uh, anywhere from math, science, I do a little PAA. You might see me in the gym quite a bit. Uh, I also coach football here. Awesome. Maybe just give our incoming grade nines a little bit of a message on what they should keep in mind as they're making the transition to high school. So. The transition to high school can be a scary thing and it's completely normal to feel that way. Uh, just keep in mind, um, the more you get involved in the school, the better off your high school experience will be. Uh, academics are important, um, but it's also important to kind of find out who you are. Um, don't change who you are, but try new things and, and try to develop that person that you want to become. Sounds great. Thanks, Rufus. Signing off. Oh, hey, it's Rufus again. He's in the gym, playing a little basketball. Hey, hey. Rufus. Welcome. This is the gym. I'm Miss B, Miss Burnauer, Mr. Pilon, and Mr. L. They're working hard away in their offices right now. We run the gym, we run the health classroom. We're so happy that you could be here with us. Some of the things you can expect to do in phys ed, fitness, of course. We do lots of activities, cooperative games, some sports, team, individual stuff. We also head into the weight room fitness center back there so we can get jacked up and get some high self-esteem. We also do health units in the back classroom. We talk about healthy eating, relationships, all that good stuff that we really need to learn about. Welcome Rufus, so glad you could be here and I hope you guys can come too. Hey Rufus, still checking out some of your first day of grade nine. I see you reading Romeo and Juliet. Must be ELA class. Hey, it is, there's Ms. Johnson. <laughs> hey Ms. Johnson, tell us a little bit about what students might learn in grade nine English. Uh, well, we do a lot of the regular stuff that you've been doing already in grade 7 and 8. It's kind of a continuation. Um, definitely lots of reading and writing, oral presentations. Um, you'll read short stories and poetry, nonfiction, some really cool Norse and Indigenous mythology, and a little Shakespeare at some point over the year. Yes. That sounds great. Can you tell us a little bit about the pre-AP program? Yeah, uh, we have a pre-AP program in ELA and it runs from grade nine to grade 12. I'm the grade nine and grade 12 teacher, so I can sort of see where you begin and end. Uh, and if you follow through, it's a much more academic um, stream, I guess you would call it. So if your skills are above average and you really, really like ELA, that is something you might want to consider. Sounds great, Ms. Johnson. Have a great afternoon, Rufus and Ms. Johnson. Yay! See you in the fall. Okay. Oh, hey, it's Rufus. He's sweeping through the frame here. Let's see what he's up to today. You missed the spot. Oh, sounds like Mr. Schmitz. Hey, Mr. Schmitz, can you tell us a little bit about what students would learn when they hit grade nine shop? Sure, yeah, you got her. Uh, so as they come into the industrial arts lab here, uh, they've come through three module areas. Uh, first one being the woodworking area. And they'll come through and uh, build a beautiful shelf where they use a variety of the tools in the woods lab. And uh, once that is done, we would transition into our next module area, which in this case will be the sheet metal area. And they're gonna build a sheet metal tote tray. And this will go inside of the toolbox that they would build in grade 10. So that's next year, Rufus. And once they're all done the metals area, we would move into the design area where we would actually build a CO2 dragster. And this will actually be raced as a class project at the very end of the semester. So that's what we cover in the grade nine shop class. Sounds exciting. Thanks, Mr. It. Schmitz. Rufus, what do you think? again we're joining him in another class today and it looks like band 
Hey, and it's Ms. Hognerud. Hey guys. How are you today? Doing great. Great. Can you tell us a little bit about what band would be like for grade nine students? I sure can. So band is an instrumental music class. So you're playing things like flute, trumpet, clarinet, and percussion, which we have some instruments here. Uh, if you were in band in elementary school, high school band is a continuation of that program, so you just keep going right on through. Uh, if you weren't in band in elementary school, or maybe you were in band for a little while and didn't continue, you're welcome to join us. You just give me a chat and we talk about it. Hey, who did we find here but Rufus enjoying his first day here at Riffle in grade 9. He is enjoying an art class. And who is he enjoying it with? Ms. Locke. Hey, Ms. Locke, how's it going today? It's going great. Can you tell us a little bit about what students might do in your class? Absolutely. So in grade nine art class, it's part of the arts ed rotation where you'll take visual art, music, and you'll take uh, drama. What we start doing in visual art is we start with some basic techniques. So it's some things you're hopefully familiar with. So drawing line work and then going into hands and shading, making some marks and mark making and drawing from life. But then we take a look at the elements of art and principles and building them into compositions, using lines and shapes and developing into more compositions with street art, artists who study specific subject matter and then communicating something through your own work. So in grade nine, you're gonna work with pencil, sometimes ballpoint pen, Sharpie, pencil crayons, and some other medium to have fun with. I look forward to meeting the grade eight, say in the, uh, grade nine next year. Thanks, that sounds great, Ms. Locke. How do you think that sounds, Rufus? Hey, future royals, look who we found. It's Rufus, taking notes learning stuff. What is he learning today? And who are we going to meet? It is Ms. Serkey, Social 9 teacher. You may have Ms. Serkey as a teacher this fall. Nice to meet you, Ms. Serkey. Can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you teach? Yeah, so hello, future royals. Welcome to Riffle. I am Ms. Serkey, and here at Riffle, I teach social studies and history. So It'll be my fourth year here at the school, and I have to say it is a great school, a great community, and I think you'll really enjoy your time here. So I teach Social Studies 9, and some things that you'll learn will be things like ancient civilization. So hopefully things you've never learned before. We talk about ancient Egypt, China, the Incans, uh, Rome, and the Middle Ages. And one of my favorite assignments is we talk about the Silk Road and the first um, the first trading routes with ancient China. So that's something that you can hopefully look forward to. And I really look forward to meeting all of you and welcoming you in the fall. So we'll see you then. Thanks, Ms. Serkey. I see you are in Ms. Sink's classroom here. Here's Ms. Sink. She's going to tell us a little bit about what she teaches here at Riffle and a little bit about the space she teaches in. Hi Rufus, hi grade 8, welcome to the communication media slash photography lab. We have this amazing Mac lab, all these fantastic computers in here and some really awesome photography equipment. In uh, communication media, we it's a creative technology class so we learn things like graphic design and, and film editing, audio editing and animation. It's super fun. In photography, we learn how to take beautiful photographs using some amazing cameras. We learn technical stuff, we learn artistic stuff. It is the best place to be. So when you're a great 10, take communication media and photography. Thanks, Ms. Sink, sounds great. Hi, Grade 8s. 
I hope you're enjoying your spend a day uh, virtually here. I'm the athletic director at Riffle High School and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about our extracurricular activities and hope that you get involved in them. They're some of the best experiences that you can have in high school, getting involved with your peers, meeting new people, and working together as a team for different things. We have all kinds of different sports for you to get involved in all our different seasons. In the fall, we have volleyball, soccer, football, cross country, golf, leading into our winter sports like basketball and hockey and curling. And even into the spring, we have, and leading into the spring, we have badminton starting up. Uh, we have wrestling, we have another season of golf and track and field. So there's always things going on athletically and for everybody in the school from grade nine to 12 have opportunities. We also have awesome clubs that you can join at the school every single year. I encourage you to see what we're being, what's being offered all the time. We have great drama productions, great improv teams, our That's Possible Theater. You can join the SRC as you go on to be part of our, our student representative council. Work towards things like yearbook that you get to keep as a keepsake for the rest of your life and many other options. It's a great uh, opportunity to join in, become uh, part of our community and be, get the fullest experience of being royal.
Go nuts. <laughs> Why don't you join the fire, Okay, so I joined mostly because I'm a sports fiber. Um, but I feel like it's a good community and you get to work with other people from different grades. I mean, I I met my best friends in this program, also forced by Emily, but then it turned into joining both Vocal Jazz, which is attached to Choir, which is also a fantastic program. Mm -hmm. And it's a great way to like start off your morning too. Like you think like early morning class, like oh I don't want to show up an hour before school, but it's like it's such a great way to start off your morning with like such positive energy and surrounded by people who also enjoy singing as much as you do. It's, it's about meeting like-minded people, and also I feel like it fosters creativity and musicality in you. It really does. I remember in grade nine, I was so scared to join because I was like, oh, I don't yeah. have any friends. Oh, yeah. I was oh. all by myself. I was sitting like as far away from everybody else <laughs> as I possibly could. And now some of my best friends and the people I'm closest to are in choir. And you just make those friendships even if you join by yourself. Hey guys, my name is Kyle Conte. I go to Ripple Catholic High School and I strongly encourage when you guys come here to try out for sports, whether that's volleyball, basketball, football, hockey, track, anything. One of the favorite thing I have here at this school is our community and our sports. How many friends I made just off making the basketball and football team, how many relationships I'll have for the longest time here. And Riffle community, it's strongly based in our sports program and we have such a great sports program here with our coaches our faculty and everybody the riffle community just loves our sports so i strongly encourage when you guys make it here try out for anything even if you don't make it it's going to be a great experience and you're going to make a lot of friends Luxembourg Ward and I am a grade 11 student here at Riffle. I am involved in the extracurricular program. I participate in basketball, volleyball, track, and flight football. I joined the extracurricular program here so that I can build relationships with peers, friends, and teachers. I also did it to represent the Riffle community, get more engaged in Riffle, and to compete against other people around the city. My advice to you is to join the extracurricular program and take on these awesome opportunities. One of my highlights from um, high school is going to a team supper and doing team bonding things like water sliding with my team. So my advice to you is to sign up for the extracurricular program and to make the memories the best in high school. In grade 12, I'm queer, trans, and I'm also French Canadian Metis. Uh, Riffle's pretty inclusive. Uh, we have a GSA that goes on here every Wednesdays, and that, that might change or whatever, but uh, a GSA is just a gay straight alliance. It's where LGBTQ plus people and allies can come together and just chill out for a day. Um, I'm also a part of the drum group and a part of uh, tobacco planting at our school, which is really fun. Um, there's a lot of indigenous stuff that goes on around this school. This room is the Wokotu and Ikmik room, uh, where you can just chill out, like eat lunch here and all that, and uh, all that. Yeah, we're getting some new stuff to put on the walls and some art, um, visual art classes in here. Uh, so yeah, it's a really chill environment here. So I hope when you guys come here, you guys feel really inclusive and you guys feel like you belong somewhere here in the school. My name is Sam, I'm in grade 12 at Riffle High School, and I definitely recommend that you join extracurricular. For me, some of my favorite parts of extracurricular was definitely getting to know a lot of the older kids in the grades. So like when I was in grade nine, I got to meet some grade 10s, grade 11s, and it really helps to know some of the older kids at school so you don't feel so like crazy alone and all that kind of stuff. So you actually like know some of the people that are around you. So that's definitely helpful. Getting to know some of the teachers is also really nice because even though like it's your first day of school, you already know like two, three teachers because those are your coaches, which is always very helpful. 
I definitely liked having something to do after school every day as well, and it's physical activity, so it's definitely good for you. <laughs> and it was just really nice in general to have something to do, and then like you get involved with like volleyball, and then you want to get involved in more sports, and then it just becomes more of a lifestyle choice than anything else, and it's just beneficial overall. It helps with your time management, it just helps you make friends and everything, and then you have people that you know in your classes that you might not have known. So you're not as like just there, you actually have a little bit of a system around you and people that you know. <laughs> Hello again, everybody. Uh, I hope everyone has really enjoyed our day. Uh, thank you so much to all the people that have contributed to this day. Uh, we've got a wonderful building to showcase and a tremendous amount of wonderful people here as well. Uh, the best thing about our school, the students. Everyone brings an amazing story to our building and then we work with those stories every single day to get to the best place possible. As well, you'll be our graduating class of 2026. That's exciting. It seems really far away. The reality is it's not that far away. So you've seen a typical life or a day in the life of a Riffle Royal. You've seen classroom stuff. You've seen extracurricular stuff. You've seen some of our staff. And we hope that this has answered all of the questions you may have about our wonderful place to be. If there are any other questions, please reach out to the school. Let us know so we can get you the answers that you need, whether it's about programming or any of the wonderful things that we have going on here. So thank you so much for taking part in our day. We look forward to seeing you next year. And we can't wait for you to join us in the Royal Red and White. Take care out there. Welcome to our virtual riffle. Oh. And I'm here to do it through an Indigenous lens. I will be, um, uh, I've lost it, Lisa, just so I... Okay, so hi, my name is Alexander. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just this... <laughs> the